Hello and welcome to our Ideas Building Leaders Use blog. I'm Bill Ronco. In this video, we're exploring psychological safety because it's a major attribute of high-performing teams and a major building block for diversity, equity, and inclusion. To help us understand how it plays out very specifically in our architecture, engineering, and construction world, we're very happy to be able to interview Bill Allerud. Bill is Executive Vice President at Columbia Construction and President of AGC Massachusetts. He's been working extensively for the past few years to understand and implement the core concepts of psychological safety at Columbia, and he has quite a story to tell. Thanks, Bill. I'm Bill Allerud. I'm Executive Vice President at Columbia Construction Company. We're a 100-year-old construction management firm. I've spent most of my career um, renovating buildings, building new buildings, mostly in the academic sector, and have had a lot of fun doing that. The last half dozen or so years, um, I have not worked on projects, but I've been working on the business, doing a number of things. Um, and I've also spent time, I've been very uh, fortunate to have been part of AGC Massachusetts. I've been on their board of directors for a number of years. And most recently, a year ago, I was uh, elected to the board chair, which has been very exciting. A lot of work, but uh, my, my priorities as board chair for AGC Mass uh, has, has to do with uh, diversity and inclusion the uh, workforce shortage, which is our industry's largest challenge right now, health, safety, and wellness, and sustainability. Those are the priorities coming out of AGC as we speak. So why is psychological safety uh, important to me? Uh, one, uh, I have learned um, in my two years of understanding what psychological safety is, is that it is the most important attribute to high performing teams. And in our industry, our teams have to be high performing. So this has really sparked my interest, you know, because we're, we're all competing against one another and how do you differentiate yourself from one another? And boy, if you can develop high performing teams, I think you're on a path here. And then two, you know, I had mentioned that, uh, you know, one of the uh, priorities at AGC Mass was diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I have also learned that psychological safety is also an attribute to having that sense of inclusion and a sense of, of belonging on a team, which is huge. So, so these two factors, the high-performing teams and the sense of inclusion and belonging, have really sparked my interest. And I'm sensing that there is so much to psychological safety. And I feel as though I'm just at the, the scratching the tip of the iceberg here on how powerful this is. So yeah. that, that's a great intro. And it really sets us up for you providing the details uh, okay. over the next couple of minutes uh, in our video here about why you think that and about what we can do, what, what uh, AEC leaders can do uh, to understand and improve psychological safety in their teams and what architecture firms and engineering firms and construction companies can do as organizations to improve psychological safety in their realm. The way I wanted to ask uh, the what is psychological safety is I just wanted to ask for specific examples uh, in design and construction when psychological safety issues come up rather than an abstract definition of it. So what, what are three or four scenarios that anybody in the industry would identify with? I think some, some examples in our industry, and I'm sure it happens in a lot of organizations where we have lessons learned, lesson learned um, sessions at the end of the project, uh, during the project. Um, I've been the recipient of these reports from these lesson learned sessions. And I've read some that are just full of accolades, you know, team members touting the strengths of the team and how good they are. I mean, that's that's easy, right? But what 
takes more effort, you know, is to facilitate a lesson learned and create an environment of psychological safety where members of the team will share what didn't go so well, you know, mistakes that they have made yeah. and yeah. what they would do different yeah. and better the next time. Yeah. And, you know, so, so what I have done myself is making certain that there's an environment of sharing among the yeah. team and that they understand why they need to be yeah. open and honest. Yeah. And it's, and it's their sharing of what didn't go well, the mistakes yeah. that they have made and what they would do differently yeah. is, is all for the benefit of future project teams, yeah. you know, because we're all in this together. Yeah. 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 That really helps uh, clarify it as an example, especially because it's it's pretty clear that there's a direct connect between profitability and learning from mistakes. Yeah. And in, in our world, we have the opportunity to do that because we're project based. So every time a project ends, we have the opportunity to sit down and say, what can we do to make it better? And if we don't have a really fully engaged discussion of that, we're not going to have anything except the commercial rather than an actual objective report. So, okay. So that makes sense. And, and I can throw another example out there that I'm sure we've all experienced. Um, and, and it pertains to like a weekly project meeting. Um, and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if we had this concept of psychological safety in these weekly project meetings? And these are the meetings I'm talking about that includes the owner, the OPM, the architect, you know, the contractor, and maybe some trade partners. You know, so think about all the, you know, weekly project meetings that you've been to in your career. And in those meetings that you had something to say, but were reluctant to share what you wanted to say, or even uh, how, how many times did someone on the project team use an acronym that you didn't know what it meant and you didn't ask because you didn't want to appear stupid, yeah. right? This just happened last week in a meeting. And, um, <clears throat> and I had that feeling. I didn't want to ask. It seemed like everybody else knew what they are committed to. <laughs> but because of that, I missed the whole point of the conversation. You know, so looking back, you know, I suspect because there was a less than ideal level of psychological safety in yeah. that team. Yeah. So, so it's really important. This happens to everybody. Yeah. 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 Okay. So those are two really good. They're two really good examples. One of the things that we've learned is that the leader of the group has a profound influence on the level of psychological safety within that group or within that team. And um, this is a couple of years ago, you know, when I first started to learn about psychological safety, I had a hunch that one of our high performing teams here at Columbia may have an increased level of psychological safety. So I found a consultant that understood what psychological safety was. And she came in and she talked to this group about psychological safety. And she administered an assessment to determine the level of psychological safety within this group. And she came back with results and said that the numbers were off the charts. And, you know, so we wanted to know, well, why is that? What 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 was going on with that with that particular off, off the off the charts in a positive way? Yes. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to thanks. be clear. Thanks. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Yeah. Um, so and the assessment is re is is a relatively easy thing to do. It's it's seven questions, takes about five minutes, and then the consultant goes away and you know, it does some work with the numbers, the analysis. And when when she came back, her analysis revealed a number of things that um, contributed to the high level of psychological safety. One, there was a strong culture in this group of teaching and learning. Senior members of the team were very proactive in mentoring and taking time um, 
to work with junior members of the team. Uh, the leader of the team, very humble, very approachable, vulnerable, very comfortable to be with. Um, we also learned that uh, risk-taking in that team is a team activity. They collaborate and assess the risks. The team shares the consequences of their decisions, whether they're good or bad. Um, members of the team listen to learn, not listen to be heard, which is huge. And praise is given freely in this team. You know, so these are kind of characteristics of this team that I think are indicative of a high level of psychological safety. Uh -huh. Yeah, so so our idea was, was to take what we learned and figure out how to sprinkle that amongst other teams within the organization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the consultant was kind of, you know, um, surprised the way that we were looking at it because she says most people come to us and they want us to measure the level of psychological safety in the low performing teams and figure out what's not going right. But in this particular case, you know, we knew we had something that was working. So let's figure out what it is and see if we can share that and spread that with other members of the team. So, so let me give you a little background on how I learned about it. So Amy Edmondson, she's a professor at Harvard Business School. She's been studying psychological safety for the last 20 years. And from my perspective, she's the current guru of psychological safety. And I learned about her through a book I was reading by Adam Grant, who's a psychological, who's a psychology professor at Wharton. In his book, is titled Think Again, which I would recommend to everybody. So I had never heard the phrase of psychological safety until I read Adam's book a couple summers ago. But since then, I've developed this, you know, kind of insatiable passion for learning more about it. So what is it? You know, according to Amy, you know, it's 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 a belief that the work environment is safe for interpersonal risk taking. So what, so what does that mean? It, it, it means that members of a group or a team experience the feeling of being able to speak up with relevant ideas, questions, concerns, or mistakes without the risk of damaging one's feelings or being ashamed or being humiliated by others in the group. And what it's not, a lack of psychological safety, you will see team members of the group keeping their ideas to themselves. Yeah. yeah. Where there's a lack of psychological safety, group members will only share what went well and makes them look good. Yeah. yeah. Right. And when when there's a lack of psychological safety, team members will not share mistakes that they have made. Yeah because their fear is that the group leader may think less of them and they think that it may threaten their career, it may compromise a promotion or compromise a bonus. So it's that fear. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 people on teams with psychological safety know that their leader and fellow team members won't embarrass them, won't reject, won't punish them for speaking up, disagreeing, making mistakes, or even failing. You know, they they actually encourage it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, your advice to leaders would be to uh, a bunch of to dos in meetings. <laughs> well, there, we'll just we'll just think about this. You know, imagine a group leader telling the team. <clears throat> It's okay to try new things and not get it right the first time around. And if you fail, it's not going to affect your performance appraisal. That's big. Yeah. That's how, big. How many team leaders do that? Yeah. 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 You're on a roll. Are there are a few others. Well, <laughs> Other to do's of in, in, interested in, leaders. And it's also um, <clears throat> demonstrating vulnerability, you know, because every team leader has made mistakes. Yeah. 
share the mistakes that you've made. Yeah. And that'll reinforce the whole idea that it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's actually going to be beneficial to others. Yeah. If you don't share it, others can't learn from the mistakes that you've made. So, you know, be be willing to be vulnerable. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I can see that the leader would have an awful lot of uh, influence creating or not not creating a culture. Um, and uh, what's always interested me in one of the things about construction projects is that you can get two teams building exactly the same thing with the same technology and the same tools and the same level of talent in their groups. But if you sat in on their meetings, you'd think that we're in different countries speaking different languages. There's, there's like the culture of a project a lot of times really can be quite independent you know, from the culture of the whole company. So that every project has its own little world within it. That's always struck me. And, and you know intuitively that a lot of that's gonna go back uh, to the leader. Uh, but it does help to demystify uh, because I know a lot of people have the intentions. They'll, they'll think about psychological safety and they think, yeah, okay, that sounds like a really good thing to do. But they'll inadvertently uh, get in their own way uh and and trip themselves up and uh, inadvertently create very unsafe environments so i want to want to keep sticking with the to do's and the not and the to not do's also if you're a well-intentioned leader uh, and you want to try some of these things well i think um, you need to listen to individuals in your group or your team listen to learn and keep asking questions Keep, keep drilling, you know, yeah. so that they have that conversation coming back, you know, and, and I've seen leaders that listen to respond and they're really not listening to the individuals because they want to say something. It's yeah. important in their mind that they get out what they think is important. That's, yeah. that's, and, and that doesn't create psychological safety. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you really got to, you know, uh, listen to learn and then you need to make sure that everybody's participating because I've seen this more often than not. I mean, you got your introverts that are kind of yeah. like, yeah. but you got to reach out in yeah. a really nice way and ask them, Charlie, what are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah. What if your whole organization, what if somebody has a senior position like your position in a company and you have the ability to implement policies to advance um, psychological safety in your organization, what would be a couple of policies that you would suggest? So this is a really good question. So one of the things that we've been doing that I've had a lot of interest um, at Columbia um, is ever since the death of George Floyd back in June 2020, we have been hyper-focused on diversity, inclusion, and equity at uh, Columbia. And the last year, I'm going to say 10, 12 months, um, our DEI working group has um, created, developed a um, strategic plan focused on DEI. With the help of a consultant, we we went out and found somebody who's actually been doing um, diversity and inclusion consultant for the last 30 years. I mean, there's a gazillion of them that have just put their shingle up in the last three, four years. But um, we were very fortunate to find somebody that this has been their career. So we've had uh, the last 10 months, we've developed uh, a strategic plan that has three goals, three SMART goals. And one of the goals is to develop um, more psychological safety within our teams and within our groups. And reason being is that we want to um, improve the feeling of inclusion, right? And the feeling of belonging within these groups. You know, so, you know, so that's, that's the goal. But at the same time, by improving the level of psychological safety coming out of our DEI strategic plan, we're also going to be improving the performance of our teams. Just as a 
um, side effect here. So, so it's hugely beneficial sure. you know, to be able to push sure. this forward. And yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that it's coming out of our DEI strategic plan, you know, because yeah. it's going to affect everybody. And yeah. yeah, and 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 if you think about it, I, I just want to get this one point across that, um, you know, back in 2015, Google had the same question. Why are, why are some of our teams performing at a higher level than other teams? So um, they had an effort. They called it Project Aristotle. And this is something that everybody that's listening to this should Google. But they identified five attributes of high-performing teams. In their, in their research that they did demonstrated that high levels of psychological safety is the single most important predictor of a team's success. <clears throat> and, you know, the other factors, you know, is, you know, two is dependability, right? Can we count on each other? Three is, you know, clarity on the team's goals, right? Uh, four, uh, do they understand the meaning of the work? Is it important to us personally? And the impact of the work, does, does the work matter? But, but, by far the most important attribute was the uh, level of psychological safety, you know? So, so it's huge in, yeah. in our ability to be able to create high performing teams, you know? So that's going to be a side effect of our DEI strategic plan, which is very yeah. exciting to us. And I'd recommend yeah. anybody listening out there take the same path because, you know, you kind of, you know, doing something really good about inclusion and feeling yeah. and belonging, but at the same yeah. time, you're improving the yeah. performance of your teams. Yeah. Thank you, Bill Allerud. That was great. Interesting. Very useful. You've really given us lots to think about. If viewers would like to learn even more about psychological safety, there are links on our website to both a book and a TED Talk by Amy Edmondson, who was the Harvard Business School professor that Bill mentioned in the interview. And down the line, if you use these ideas, I'm very interested in hearing how it plays out for you, how it impacts your company, your projects, and your people. And again, thank you, Bill Allerud.